Hey guys, Sevchuf here. Today, I'm doing a dungeon tier list. Oh my god. I'm gonna be ranking them based on how much benefits they have, the pots, the gear, the consumables, the fame, the exalts, versus the costs. So like the time, the efforts, the gear or pet that the dungeon requires, because sometimes without them, it's gonna be a pain that and of course a difficulty and this video also doubles as a new player guide because you guys will know what you should farm and what you should stay away from what's not worth the time we got six tiers here we got the op tier dungeons that should probably be nerfed because they're so broken s super worth if you see this dungeon you should probably do it a is great b is good c is mech so it's up to you if you do it or not and d is just a waste of time and yeah we're doing this live on twitch so if you haven't make sure to check out the stream follow it and uh subscribe pirate cave as much as i would love to meme this is a d tier by the time you get out, you could have already gotten a T5 equipment. And the Corsair ring <laughs> is a meme. All right, next, we got Forest Maze. This one's slightly better than Pirate Cave. If you do it, it's slightly more worth the time because uh, the tiered items are higher. And this one is a Bramble Bow. Oh my god. I'm guessing it's like T5, T6. But you do get a T5, T6 bow quite quickly. So while I do think the Pirate Cave is a low D tier, I think this is a higher D tier, to be honest. We're up to the Spider Den. If you've seen any of my... My HPEs, you will know how much I love this dungeon, and I love it because it's so busted. And uh, end game players also run this dungeon despite it dropping very low. You can go into a spider den on a brand new character, it's really easy to clear. You can be level one, it levels you fast. You can get tier four everything basically on average. End game players do this for spider ikers, they're broken. You can hold, look at this, I'm holding five spider ikers at the same time as normal health pots, and they heal you more. And you can put them in your inventory slots for even more healing. So yeah, I actually think this is a basically a must do. I think it's an SS tier. And now we're up to the Forbidden Jungle. This one, uh, this one also has decent gear. The bad thing about Forbidden Jungle compared to Spider Den is it doesn't drop any tiered gear, so it's very rare to get gear upgrades. And if it does drop upgrades, it's a UT. The UTs are pretty nice. I think the staff from this dungeon is tier 9.5, is that right? And the skull is pretty good. And the ring is nice. The ring, if you have a weak pet, what it does is it, I think there's a 10% chance on shooting that you restore five mana. So it's um it's quite nice. The staff is tier eight. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so I only see think this is like a low C tier, this dungeon. Alright, we're up to the hive! This dungeon is so rare, man. The orb that drops from this dungeon is really nice because it's a really strong slow. And you do get de duck decks sometimes, yeah. But yeah, honestly, if you do come across it, it's not really worth. I think it's like I think it's better than Pirate Cave and Forbidden Jungle, but not much better, so I'm gonna put it at low D. The consumable gives 10 seconds of healing. True, I'm gonna put it in low C actually. I'm gonna put it in low C. Next, Snake Pit. Snake Pit might be the best dungeon for getting speed pots. And the Snake Eye Ring from Snake Pit is so crazy, man. Every character should be rocking a Snake Eye Ring, unless you have a Perma Speedy. You can get T9 drops from this, T7 to T9. You can get good STs, you can get a strong ST ring. Um, I think it's like 150 HP and minus five speed, so it can actually help you some dungeons. Also bulwarks, underrated, um, and yeah, ST lever is nice. I think this is a high S tier to be honest. I think this is a high S tier. It's pretty cracked. We got onto Sprite World, which is very similar to Snake Pit because instead of speed, this drops. Um, this is probably the easiest way to acquire decks, and it especially depends on your class. If you're playing a uh, Trickster, you can just jump over the gap, so it's really easy. And yeah, this has some cracked item drops. Cubin Ring, one of the best new player rings in the game. Um, and also yeah, EP is good, but Plane Walker and Celestial Mace are cracked items. Celestial Mace is one of the best maces in the game, and the fact that it drops from this is crazy. And um, also, Planewalker is the best ability for Rogue. Planewalker for the longest time was my favourite UT in the game. I don't know what it is right now, but uh, yeah, there's been so many UTs coming out, so it's hard. And yeah, Cuban Ring is crazy. So the question is, is this better than Snake? Pits. Honestly, the fact that this has a couple of items and Dex feels like it's harder to get than Speed nowadays, I think it is slightly better. But I think these are both high S tier. Alright, next we got Cave of a Thousand Treasures. This one doesn't have as many good items as uh, the other Godlands dungeons we've talked about, Sprite and Snake. But uh, this is the first time we'll be talking about marks. Because the mark that you get from this dungeon is so OP, you only need one to complete the quest. And it also gives you a loot boost potion and a loot tier boost potion when you complete it which is really nice so yeah this is a really good beginner dungeon i would do it whenever i see it just to get the mark and um it's one of the easiest
easiest ways, it's the easiest dungeon to acquire tier 5 rings, so especially extra HP is pretty bonkers. I think this one is another S tier dungeon. Oh yeah, and I forgot you can get potions within the dungeon by killing the enemies. Just the mark alone makes this dungeon great. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention the ST lever that this drops. It's pretty nice for beginners, because when you get hit on a lever class, uh, you get healing for 5 seconds, so it's pretty nice. I do think it's an S, definitely. Um, I still do it. Every single time I see a T cave, I do it. Alright, next one, Ancient Ruins. Ancient Ruins is cool for a couple of reasons. Rapier sucks. <laughs> it is such an L, but it's got budget Debo. I think the bow from this is quite underrated. It also has a consumable, which gives you 100 HP, 100 MP, and I think it stacks up to 8. Is that true? 100, sorry, it's 120 MP and HP, so it's really strong. But for a beginner, this it might be a bit rough to have the hallucination. So it does hallucinate you for 8 seconds. It also gives you sandstone seal, which is pretty nice. And this is one of the best dungeons in the game for leveling, because the cactuses that explode also give you XP. It's also easy to complete, and it's really easy to search for tea room. But yeah, I think this is... I think this is probably a high A tier, to be honest. Alright guys, Magic Woods! One of the more easier dungeons, it can, there's some minions in here that can uh, kill you very suddenly. Um, I've seen so many 8-8s die to this dungeon, there's one butterfly that like explodes. M Woods doesn't have any notable item drops, the items are pretty bad, I mean there's a good ST trap that drops, and I guess the shield is alright, but they drop at such a rare rate. The staff that drops there is uh... T11, T12, the orb is L. If you solo, it's a guaranteed speed and a guaranteed dex for such a short dungeon. It's like five rooms. The boss is really easy. Um, But yeah, I think Magic Woods is probably a high A tier. It's literally, basically, the value of Magic Woods is just easy speed and dex. And those two pots are pretty annoying to acquire. Next is Candyland. Oh god, Candyland. This is a really hard dungeon to evaluate. It's not hard at all. You won't die. Basically, it's pretty impossible to die. It doesn't take that much effort. Honestly, if you find a candy land, I only recommend farming it until the cupcake. And even then, it's questionable whether it's worth it. Like, I don't actually think Sea Land's that great of a dungeon. The pots are quite rare. The armor socks is not that great. I guess for a new player, it might be good. But, um, the pixie sword is the only notable drop. I guess the seal is kind of good as well. Oh, I guess the, uh, the ST armor is pretty good. But yeah, it takes so long for this to get value. I think it's higher than the Forbidden Jungle and the Hive. But I think it's low C tier with these three. I think it's low C tier. Alright, next one, we have UDL. It's very similar to the other Godlands dungeons where it specializes in one potion because it's really good for Wiz. It does take a while to get to the boss though. Unlike Sprite and Snake Pit, for some annoying reason, the splits can be really long and it is a lot of rooms to the boss. So it is a bit annoying, but you can find trooms. It also drops Debo, Toga Picto. Debo is strong, everyone loves Debo. It's really nice for uh, early game players. I think Toga Picto is around par, on par of tier 13 and tier 14. And the staff is on par with tier 12 and tier 13. So it is pretty good. But yeah, it is a bit, it is more longer than I'd like. And the boss takes a bit longer than the other Godlands dungeons. Oh, except for Ancient Ruins. Um, I think, uh... Alright, we got an A. We got an A. Next up! Puppet Theodore. It drops the ST robe and ST ring, I think, which are both shit drops Harley, which is pretty f***ing bad. Yeah, the clear takes forever. The tea rooms are nice though, but the tea room is also takes long and it's a bit of a clear. It does drop attack, which I find to be one of the rarer potions. Oh, and it drops the prism, which is also very mid. All right, I'll give you a low C. Okay, low C. We, have, we don't really have good attack options yet. So these are like a beginner dungeons. You can get attack from Cave of Thousand Treasures, which is what makes it great. Can drop from Ancient Ruins, but yeah, other than those... I forgot to mention that Sprite can drop death, <laughs> so it cements it even more here. And you can get attack from Sprite. F um, Sewer's interesting. Sewer's one of the hardest dungeons to rush so far, because uh, the water sickens. Uh, a lot of the minions in here do really high damage, and it's not that short of a path to the boss, but it does drop great loot. One of the best poisons in the game, especially where it drops. Does it also drop the ST poison? I know it drops the ST dagger, which is bad. Oh, it also drops Void Blade. Actually, Void Blade is cracked. Mm, I'm actually leaning towards low A tier, because Void Blade is such a W. Plague Poison is a W, but not like as much as Void Blade. Wait, the dagger is below C Dirk and Avarice? Third or fourth? Are you talking about this dagger? What? It's like tier 9 damage, isn't it? This item beats C Dirk at 50 defense. Holy sh**, it's crazy. I think it's here. 
Above Magic Woods, below UDL. You've got more reason to run it over these dungeons, but it is a bit tougher. All right, let's do next one. Cursed Library. The only reason why Cursed Library might be in at insta-kill you, so you have to be very aware of them. There's a bird-looking thing, bookworm. And there's this man guy. So you just have to watch out for those two. Otherwise, it's an easy rush. Um, and it has two boxes, which both drop two pots. And they have dropped really good items. The ST bow is nice. The ST lever is nice. The ST bow drops from second boss. ST lever from first boss. Morello Nomicon is pretty bad for new players, but it's a way to apply curse. And I guess the seal is also a niche thing. But you can also get tier 5 rings from the second boss. Oh yeah, and you can get a UT slowing wacky from the minions. And yeah, the boss is pretty AIDS if you're a new player actually. But once you get good at it, it's a very easy two pots. And Wiz and Vit are not easy to get. Like, if you look at these dungeons so far, only this one guarantees Wiz. You can get Vit from Ancient Ruins, but yeah, otherwise, so far, and you can get her from Sealand, but yeah, otherwise, so far, it hasn't been so easy to get those two. Wiz and Vit, before one particular dungeon came out, used to be so hard to get. But yeah, I'm not sure where I should put this. I think such a good maxing dungeon. Easy rush, but the boss is a bit tough. I think I'd put this low S tier before Snake Pit. Like, I wouldn't put it close to Snake Pit. These are all high S tier, and this is low S tier. All right, guys, we're up to the Mad Lab. I can't believe this is a Kabam dungeon. And to be honest, the potion side of things is really, really, really not nice. You just get a Wiz from the first boss, and you get Death from the second boss, or do you also get Wiz? But the items are good. This dungeon is actually really annoying if you're a noob soloing, because if you don't one cycle the first boss, he spawns minions, and then you have to worry about minions while finishing the boss. And then the second boss can take two or three cycles, maybe even four, which is annoying. But the items. So firstly, you can get T4 HP rings. I know you can get it from the big red guys, and I think the small green guys. The whites are also really nice from this. You can get Foamy, which is really nice for beginners because it slows enemies. Slows is, slow is really underrated because Paralyze doesn't work on everything, but slow almost does. And yeah, when enemies are slow, it's just much easier to handle them. The Mad Lab robe is also really good for beginners because it discounts your ability for robe class. I know the second boss drops Conducting Wand, which is also a really strong wand. The thing is, I don't think many endgame players would run this because they'd rather trade for the items, they're all tradable. Expo, I forgot about Expo. Expo isn't that great anymore, let's be honest. I'd rather rock a tier for HP ring. I would probably say that, given, like, the pots is bad, but given, oh, and I forgot to mention that getting to the first boss takes a, a, a takes an age. It's, uh, it's like uh, on par, it's like the hardest dungeon to rush, on par with Toxic Sewers, and as long. Oh, actually, it's actually longer, it's a bit annoying. But the items are really good, so I wouldn't say it's in B tier, but it's somewhere in A tier. I wouldn't say it's super worth either. Oh, the boss drops Death and Wiz. Okay, I mean, that doesn't change my opinion that much, because I forgot to mention that with the second boss, you have to kill these, these uh, Tesla coils, and there's so many scattered around the map, it's so annoying. This is tough. It gives very similar to vibes of a sewer, where the items are really good, the pots are mid, and the dungeon is just fucking annoying. The question is, I actually think it's either Sewers or Mad Love. I think it's Neighbors. And we also have to take into account the, the new players. Yeah, I'll probably put Lab as higher. Lab is higher, and the expo is nice. Alright guys, Abyss of Demons. This dungeon fell off, didn't it? This is probably the only reliable vitality dropper so far. This dungeon is the hardest to rush so far. The only item you're really seeking is either D-Blade or the Orb. The boss also takes a while because as a new player, you want to clear the white demons around the boss room, which takes even more time. It takes ages to get to the boss. Oh yeah, I forgot about the sheaf. Oh, and a good thing about this though is that the minions drop HP pots often and mana pots. I honestly would agree with either low B tier or high C tier. Abyss is a high C tier to be honest. Okay, it's either Sea Land or Abyss. What do you guys think? Sealand has some benefits that Abyss doesn't. Like, Sealand is easy. Um, that's about it. <laughs> Actually, you know what? The ST orb is kind of good, and you can find tier rooms. I'm putting this at the very low B tier right now. Very, very, very low B tier. Okay, Mana. Mana is cool. Mana has a really cool rogue set that it drops. Really awesome dagger. Really awesome. This is for beginners, by the way. It's more awesome for beginners. I don't know how good it is for endgame, but uh, the dagger is awesome. The cape is awesome. The lever and ring are only good for noobs, but I think... I think the dagger and the cloak is good no matter what. Um, Puri is awesome for sure. Puri is awesome. This dungeon is also special because it drops the only consumable in the game that comes to mind that cleanses you like Quicksilver Sash from League. The only problem is that if you're a noob, this can be annoying. No dungeon here 
is a good source of attack. I think this uh, T cave is a pretty nice way to get attack, but it's just not easy to farm. Sea land you can get it, but it's not consistent, and then puppet is just annoying. So I think this is either an S tier or an A tier, but I think it's more an S tier. Um, I think it's probably mm, I think it's less than Curse Library because the potion in the potion department's shit. In the potion department, mana is pretty bad. It takes a while to get the one attack. Um, the dungeon rush isn't that bad, and the dungeon clear isn't that bad. The dogs can be annoying, but yeah, I think uh, I think it's nice to give it low S tier. <laughs> All right, Sim. Haunted Sim is such a meme in my stream, because we love doing this dungeon level 1, it's so fun. Um, and the interesting thing, thing about this dungeon is, by finding the one dungeon, you get 5. I do think that Sim takes too long, but do you guys remember how long it used to take? It used to be atrocious. But it is kind of nice for pots. I don't know if it's solo guaranteed 2 pots, but you can do the first boss and get 2 pots and leave. Um, but I don't know if it's guaranteed. Just for the first boss alone, the fact that you get, can get 2 pots and leave is pretty nice. So based on that alone, it should be an A tier. But when we think about the, the rest of the dungeon, I don't think it's really worth doing the rest of the dungeon. I don't think F-Ride is that great, and it's quite rare. Soul's Guidance is the only notable item drop, I think. Honestly, if you run through Godlands, you'll find Sam's, but noobs don't do that. Given that it could be just a quick two pots, and it's basically impossible to die on the first floor. I think even, like, it's not that low A tier is bad. I, I think it deserves to be here. Maybe high BT. Oh no, you can go in for the two pots and it's nice. Oh, I actually don't recommend people doing Sim past the first boss. It's either low A tier or high B tier. What do you guys think? Maybe high B tier. Yeah, high B tier. We're up to the machine. Guys, I'm gonna need your help a lot with this one. Because the only perks of machine is that it can drop some high value items. Like white bag prism and white bag shield. Which are meme items, but you can trade them for a lot. Okay, I was just I was just trying to be fair. Because I am not a good judgment on this one. And as far as I know, this dungeon can kill you. <laughs> I haven't done many machines. And I think that's for good reason. D. <laughs> Next one, Sea Depths. This is the epic version of Spider Den. But it's not as epic, because this is basically at the top. <laughs> um, but it is still really great. This dungeon is so awesome for pots. What do you get? On solo, you get a mana, greater whiz, and greater death. Is that true? And that's only from the boss. But yeah, the items that this drops is really great as well. The Ripper isn't that good, the ST Dagger. But the um, Mace is... On par with the best mace in the game because it's of its utility. And the Doku is on par with the best katana. It's the hardest one so far. So I wouldn't put it in double ST in no way. It's definitely S. There's no doubt it's S. I want to put this in the high S tier. Even though it's so hard, the items are just so good. Next one! This one's very similar um, in difficulty. Uh, oh, not the rush. The rush of Wood Lab is a joke. The rush is so easy. This also, okay, this is really good for potions. It's similar to, um, it's not as good as Sea Depths for potions. I do think on average they're easier than the Crawling Depths. But yeah, we forgot to mention the items. Great bow, leaf bow, crazy. Even for end game, because you can enchant with the, with the B enchant, making it the strongest bow in the game. The uh, I think the ST bow from Tyrim is very underrated, especially against end game bosses. It has a high range, reliable shot speed and pattern, and uh, it armor pierces. The wacky is uh, mid, and the sheaf is mid. I think it's slightly behind C Devs. This is so hard. All right, we're up to D Dox. D Dox is also very similar to Sea Depths and Wood Lab, but the gear is a lot worse. Does he get Cutlass, which can, which is, it does become the best sword in the game, but before the enchant, the all helm is also nice, especially for beginners actually, never mind, I wasn't wrong. The gear from this is nice. The gear from all three of these is nice. And yeah, this has really good potions. It drops speed and dex, which is annoying. Crab drops a guaranteed life on solo, but good luck killing that as a noob. But yeah, because of the crab, this is actually probably the hardest rush out of these three. Maybe here. I still think it's a great dungeon, don't get me wrong. It's in the great tier. Alright, next, Sulfurous Wetlands. Speaking of hardest dungeon, I think this one might be the new hardest dungeon. Okay, this is two bosses. You can get many potions from this dungeon. This dungeon does have a really nice armor for beginners. When you shoot, and you're in combat, it gives you 20 health per second. Um, but yeah, this dungeon is probably the hardest clear so far. Trap is mid, ring is mid, this is really nice, and the staff is really nice, but the katana's bad. The items in general in this dungeon are quite bad, so it's clearing this for pots. I don't think this is a great dungeon by any means. I think I'm actually going to do this. I actually think I'm going to bring the Dedox down here. These are all even, basically. I think this is very low B tier. I would, did want to put this at C Oh, this is like on the bottom of this tier. Mm, 
I don't know. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna put this lower. How did you guys convince me to put this? These are all mid. Abyss, high C tier. How did you guys convince me to put this here? <laughs> Alright guys, we're up to Parasite Chambers. It only keeps getting harder. I think this dungeon's the hardest Sarosh so far. This dungeon is so not generous with pots either. You kill the boss for a chance of a mana. If you do it with other people, you might just get a P-Bug. <laughs> if you do a full clear, you can get multiple attack potions from the... What are they called? The, like the things that shoot out shots and spawn things and you have to armor break them. But yeah, it does have some crazy items. Parasite has Scepter, which is really good. The spell is insane. And the Tome sucks. <laughs> oh, the wand is also really great, the ST wand. But yeah, this would take a long time. Yeah, I think even though that this would take a long time to solo, I think you're better off soloing it. The boss is like on par with others, but like if you want to rush it and clearing it, it's just so yuck. The fame you get from this dungeon is the, probably the nicest so far. I think the fame is valuable, but uh, I wouldn't say it's like a factor that really influences the tier. Either a very low B tier or a mid to high C tier. The items are nice and manner is nice. I'll probably keep it at high C. Wait, actually, you know what? The fact that it's so good for fame is actually making me want to put up higher. Okay, I'm putting it low B. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's like a factor that really influences the tier. All right, beach zone this dungeon. All right, next one, Davy. Davy is a slept on dungeon. Not only is this so easy because uh, the clear and the rush is easy, you can just walk through it. But yeah, like you can get treasure rooms in this dungeon in the place of keys. But it drops the main important thing is that this is so good for maxing wizard attack. You can get a crazy amount. If you're solo, I think it's guaranteed wizard attack per T room, per boss. I think this is one of the best potion per time spent dungeons in the game. And it's also so low risk, it'd be silly to die. And it also drops a really good uh, quiver that can give you perma speedy. I mean, if you have a cracked pet, you have to have a cracked pet for that. It also drops a dagger, which is on par of tier 12. It drops a prism, which is good to feed. <laughs> the items from this dungeon aren't that great. Oh, it does drop a sword and an armor piece that is okay. So what is this sword on par with, does it say here? It's a direct middle ground between sea sword and ancient stone sword. So uh, it's pretty mid. Uh, this is a must do on HPEs. The only thing about this is that the gear isn't that good. I'm feeling these two positions, or maybe even double S tier, just because it's so good for pots. It's actually f how good it is. I honestly think it's very low double SS. All right, guys, next is Ice Cave. This uh, dungeon did improve the rework dramatically, but man, is it a piece of shit. It does have some nice item drops, like the robe is one of the best robes in the game, especially for beginners. The ring is a budget DPS ring. The skull was amazing, but soloing this dungeon, especially for a new player, is f The fame is also decent, and a tip that I have for you guys that are looking to maximize their fame gain is you want to stay in the middle when the boss drops skulls, because then you stay in range for all of the skulls when they die. All right, next we have OT. This is actually, funnily enough, this is another one that's good for fame. I mean, for a new player, the clear for this might be AIDS. It has a lot of good and mid drops. A C bow fell off because it didn't get buffed in the bow rework as far as I know. C trap is pretty mid because it paralyzes and paralyzes is bad in this game compared to other negative status effects you can inflict because it gets immune to everything. C silk is good for where it drops but it's nothing to be too happy about. Coral ring is a uh, coral ring. It's a mid as, get as well. ST staff which is like a pixie sword for staff classes but that's the worst class to have a pixie sword for. You can get uh, the robe, which is also very mid. Oh, I forgot about this ring. This ring, if you wear it over the armor, is really good for a new player because it's uh, it heals. If you're looking for fame, it's the worst of the three, but it's still better than all else. Or all, all else. But um, I want to say this is... I think this is worse than Sealand, honestly. Because of its feed power, I might put it higher than Puppet. But the thing is, you will like never get pots from this. If it is a two minute clear, you won't get the potion. Very low chance. I think this is a good placement for it for now. Okay, I'm gonna need help with this one. The tavern. I need help with this one. The thing is, this is one of the ones where you need to know where to stand. And yeah, this dungeon's quite quick. Yeah, this one's so nice, guys. Look at this. On equip, 50 HP, 18, vit, 10, uh, 18 def, 10 vit, this armor. I don't know. I do want to put this in A or S tier. Alright, next we have Mountain Temple. Mountain Temple is pretty cool. It has a lot of notable item drops. Irvin Wand is really strong. Wand of the Fallen is really strong. The Katana is like a tier 12 reskin. The armor is good. The Wacky is good, I think. The ring is bad. The ring is bad. Orb of the Aether is like a Discord thing. I don't think... Oh, the Wacky is bad. This Wacky is bad. Sorry, the Sheaf is good, I meant. 
The spell was okay. Oh yeah, and Wonder the Fallen is now the end best endgame wand if you enchant it with the beefing. Yeah, never mind. This is a better version of the Honey Orb, I forgot this slows. Potions feel really bad compared to um, dungeons of a similar difficulty. Like I would say Deadwater Docks, Sulfurous Wetlands, Sea Depths and Woodlab are like, oh no, Woodlab is so easy. But I would say these three dungeons are si similar uh, difficulty boss wise and rushing wise. And the solo clear is also a bit depressing because if you get slowed and paralyzed as a noob or petrified, I would never go for the tea room. Because when you rush past enemies in this game, they get activated and go away from their original positions and they are more ready to shoot. So um, yeah, going for the tea room is very rough. I think this is definitely good tier. It's definitely good tier because the drops are just so good. Maybe even low A tier. I think I'll probably put it at the top of good tier. What do you guys think? All right, guys, we're up the load. Okay, Lod for some reason looks like it would be the scariest dungeon in the world. Because it has dragons and shit. But it's so easy. It's so dumb. And you can get... How many different potions? You can get seven different potions. Quiz, Vit, Speed, Death, Dex, Attack, and Mana. Pretty crazy. It does take a while though, which is the annoying part. But the amount of drops... The amount of good item drops it also has is bonkers. Like, let me show you. If you do this in the... Uh, order as well, it makes it a lot easier in the admirable order, which is red, blue, green, purple. Um, if you do it in a different order, it can be a lot harder, but yeah, look. One of the best katanas in the game, it's insane. One of the... Oh, it's a good level. It's a good level, especially for newbies. I would say it's one of the best noob levers in the game. This is a great armor. Insane. Um, Midnight Star, pretty mid, because Paralyze. Sword, pretty yuck. The helm is really good for survivability. It gives you HP and damage as you spam it. Um, the armor's pretty mid, but feed power. The ring is good. Like, it's HP and speed, which is okay. Um, the sheath is really strong, and yeah, but yeah, Lod takes a while. Lod takes a while. The mace and the robe is pretty yucky, though. It's really hard to die to this dungeon. I think green and purple would be the ones that kill you if you die. It's very noob-friendly, and other people are most likely doing it as well. I think, uh, double S tier. We're up to tomb. This is so sad. I love this dungeon. It's so nostalgic, but I don't love it enough to do it ever again. There's actually no drops from this dungeon that are like, great. The pyro ring is good, but it's like a side grade. I guess Book of Geb is great, but you can trade for it as well. It takes so long to get going, guys. Even if you're rushing this, it takes way too long to get the bosses started. And yeah, life in this game is such a joke. This dungeon used to have a monopoly on life pots, so in that case, it was insane but yeah even if you do this you have to do this solo to get free pots which will take you as a new player 20 minutes if you're lucky but if you do it in a group it can take you 10 minutes for no life pots or nothing i think it's higher d tier all right third dimension this dungeon looks really cool um and it's fun to do on a hp of the bosses but it takes a while and it can be quite lethal to rush especially for a new player and for some reason the bosses feel long i don't know how i feel about third dimension I don't find it boring, to be honest. This dungeon doesn't have any, like, crazy drops. The only good thing about this is you can get T5 rings. Uh, I guess you can get that from all equal difficulty dungeons. I want to see if there's, like, one great item from third dimension. This is... I'd say this is go... Oh, mid. This is mid. This is, uh, mid. Uh, and yeah, these... Oh, I guess the wacky is really nice, but, uh... Yeah, that's about it. And yeah, the, uh, Cogbolt Archer token is a good thing. But yeah, the pots are really sad. I wouldn't make I wouldn't say this is a waste of time. Yeah, I just straight up ignore this on most classes on HPEs. Yeah, cubic seal is pretty nice. Another craftable item though. Very easily craftable. The sad thing about a forge for mid-game is it does invalidate a lot all of the UTs in mid-game dungeons, because you can craft them all. I think this is high C tier. Maybe behind Abyss or Sea Land. Nest! This is the first exaltation dungeon. If you're not familiar, because you might be a new player watching this video or stream. An exaltation is something that you gain when you're 8 to 8 and you complete the dungeon. But yeah, um, with Nest, this gives you an exalt, which is something that we should value a lot. It also, I think is, this is dungeon is really nice for the clear. The reason why I say that is the clear is short, it's 5 rooms, you can get Dex and Death, and the minions also drop really nice items, especially for newer players. You can get Behemoth armor, Apiary and uh, Honey Circlet are a nice combo to have. And yeah, T-Room is really easy in this dungeon I find, I mean like out of the endgame bosses. 
Uh, Nest also has so many nice drops. Like, I mentioned a lot of nice drops from just the minions, but from the bosses, the tea room and the main boss, the helm is nice, mace is pretty bad, but the armor's nice, the wand is nice, the trap is really nice, and then you also get T13 weapons and T14 armors from the boss. Queen Sting is bad, actually, and this sword's bad. But yeah, there's just so many things. There's just so many things. This is also a shorter dungeon. Uh, I want to put this here. Alright guys, we're up to Fungal! We'll count Fungal as its own thing. And Fungal Caven is similar to Nest that it gives you an exalt, this time being Wiz. And one big difference between Nest and Fungal is that Nest drops a lot on the way to boss. Fungal doesn't, and it's so much longer. You can get Decker Rings from the Crystal and the Plate Body from the Mushrooms, but that's very rare. This do this boss does have some nice drops. Like, let's let me show you. Mushroom Tome is good. Oh, actually, I forgot about Fungal Trap. That's good. But yeah, T14 weapons, T14 armors is good. The STs aren't that great. And you know how hard this dungeon is when you're solo, guys? Holy sh- This is probably the hardest HPE dungeon other than O3, man. I might put this on the lowest of B tier. Alright, now we're up to Crystal Cave. Crystal Cave is very similar in Fungal Cave. You have to clear these crystals in order to activate the boss. But yeah, the boss drops are also not great. What are the boss drops on Crystal again? Oh, the lever and the ring combo is really nice for when you want to do dungeons where you want to boost your maximum HP. I think uh, probably above Sim. Alright guys, Lost Halls. Um, Lost Halls. By the way, we've Lost Halls. We are considering the fact that it stems to Cult and Void. We're not taking into account doing Cult and Void. We're just considering that fact. But we also want to think about doing Titan and the uh, MBC and MBD. And also the pot rooms, man. The fastest way you actually get... Um, pots in this game is by rushing pot rooms. Also the titan that um, drops that allows you to go to cult after you've cleared three pot rooms. It that drops a guaranteed potion as well. Um, but yeah, soloing this dungeon can be rough, especially because of crusades. And uh, Lost Wars can be heavily PvP'd by accident. Mm, and NBC, NBC has so many good drops, we haven't even gotten to the bosses. Um, you can get some STs from the minions. I wouldn't take them into account too much because they're hyper rare. But yeah, the boss has several good drops. If you solo the boss, you get a guaranteed tier 12. Um, you can also get tier 13 weapons, tier 14 armors. Not the subtypes as well, so they're better, I think. You can get Color Sword, potentially best sword in the game, one of, at least. Uh, Potato is really nice. I think Marble Seal is still a nice item for beginners, if you're in a group that is. But yeah, it's also good fame. This is also good fame. Um, I probably will probably put this in low great tier. Because yeah, if you if you do know how to rush it, it's crazy. And it does stem to cult, which is a even better dungeon. We'll talk about that one next. Alright, ready? Next one, cult. Doing the cult is, this is the easiest exalt dungeon. And uh, it's pretty nice because it gives you the speed exalt. But yeah, there's not that many good drops from cults, like the skull and the robe OP, but that's about it. Um, but yeah, for potions, this can drop a lot of mana. I think a noob is better off getting Mad Lab Robe than the, uh, than the cult robe, to be honest, and it's way easier. I don't think it's, it's a bit easier than Nest, but the loot is a lot less on average. I think I would put it here. Oh no, we're up to Void. Void is really fun in a pub group. It's pretty boring in a Discord. There's two redeeming factors to Void. It drops... Oh no, it's not even the best quiver in the game anymore. It's the new ST Cogbold looking one. I don't think this can be in D because of the uh, Exalt. But it's so... It's lowest of C. It has to be. You, If you do this in a group, it's so often that you get a P bag as well. Yeah, I forgot that you don't actually need this to progress in the game. I would actually put this in D tier. But uh, where do we put this in D tier? I'd say it's even worse than Tomb due to its accessibility. I would actually put Void here. <laughs> Steamworks! I think Steamworks is on par difficulty with Lost Halls in terms of doing Marble Colossus. But the gear is so much better. So you can get the best DPS ring in the game from the minion clear, though I don't recommend it. Just like Spider Den and Crawling Depths, you can get um, HP pots that stack in a different consumable slot, and it gives you 200 HP per consumable slot instead of just 100. Um, and you can get tier 13 weapons, tier 14 armors. I think this, this staff is alright, right? But yeah, this scepter is amazing. The shield is nice. The skull is amazing. The dagger is mid. The uh, wand is amazing. And the Cogbold Core makes four amazing items. It's so cool. Yeah, Ancient Sword upgraded, Doombo upgraded, the uh, the Tech Total's Tail upgraded, and the uh, Void Blade upgraded are all at least good. The Socket Blade, which is the upgraded Void Blade, is insane. Um, but yeah, Steamworks is more consistently harder. 
because MBD does have a lot of easy phases. This is the hardest dungeon so far, other than uh, st other than Fungal. Oh, it's on the Power of Lost Tools. But I would. Oh, actually, never mind. Void is the hardest. <laughs> never mind. I forgot about that. Um, I think this is definitely above Nest. What do you guys think? Steamworks goes there, just under, or maybe even double S. I think moving Sprite and Steamworks up to double S. All right, guys, you made it here, Moonlight Village. Honestly, this might be worth making a triple S tier four because it gives you three different exalts, so you can run it for life. It gives you every potion in the game. If you've seen my HPUs, you've probably seen that I have at least one Moonlight Village in every HPU. That's just because they're just that busted, man. Like, this is a more beginner-friendly dungeon than, uh, I would argue this is more beginner-friendly than Lord. Because, uh, a beginner might get f in a Lord if they have bad enough gear or a pet. This dungeon will not gear check you. It will never gear check you. It gives you the most pots in the game in the shortest amount of time. And that's not even taking into account fishing, which is another two pots for nothing. It would take you another two minutes. And then there's Umi. Now, Umi definitely, uh, isn't beginner-friendly. <coughs> But yeah, we haven't even gotten into the items. Every white bag here is at least great. This, busted. This, maybe it's good or great. This is busted for beginners and newer players that don't have uh, a pet. This is great. This is OP. 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 And you can get tier 13 uh, weapons quite often from the bosses, the main bosses. And if you can learn to do Umi, you can get a uh, tier 14. And you know, this is the only dungeon in the game that can drop any potion. Other than uh, dungeons that drop mystery pots, but yeah. Okay, maybe it shouldn't be in its own tier, triple S tier. I do actually believe Moonlight Village is SS. Okay, maybe I'm gonna put, I'm actually gonna put Steamworks at S tier. Okay, Shadows. Dude, Shadows is interesting because Shadows has the best items that we've encountered so far, but it's so AIDS. If you're doing this in public, it's almost guaranteed to be a solo. And the pots are really bad. The potions are really bad from this dungeon. They're horrible. Yeah, drop rates from the armors from minions are low, but they can drop from the tablets quite often. But if you do want to get the exalt, remember that completing this fully does give you two exalts. But uh, yeah, if you're a newer player, it's going to take so long to learn this. Because remember, if you die in Moonlight Village, it's no sweat. You can bring any character in here. But if you die in Shadows with a character with gear that was required to complete it, it would take you quite a while to build up to be able to try shadows again you know what i mean yeah so i'm not sure about shadows because yeah if we check the gear shadows has so many s tier items at least oh this has so many double s tier items this decker ring is probably an s tier um this uh heavy armor is an what's it called double s tier there's so many t for t14 items and t15 items that are nice s tier oh a double s tier double s tier double s tier pretty good Pretty good, um, pretty good, double S tier, double S tier, double S tier, probably double S tier. Warmonger, pretty good, double S tier, double S tier. These are pretty damn good. Yeah, and then there's this robe, which is a double, oh, maybe not double S tier, but it's crazy. If you do learn how to solo this dungeon, it is one of the best dungeons for getting feed power. Honestly, this dungeon's so rough for new players, but the gear is so good. <sighs> And the, sh the exalt is replaceable. Guys, where do you think? I'm actually not sure. Actually, you know what? Mm. What do you guys think about lowest in S tier? This is horrible until your end, 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 end game. Advanced Cog. Um, it does like 50% more damage, or is it 25% more damage? I think it's 50% more damage in like all phases. Um, and it's got a new extremely hard patience phase. And the clear is harder, and the mini boss is harder. Oh, it's 30% more damage. It does drop, uh, it does drop whites more often. And it does drop its own unique engraving. But the engraving is so bad. Honestly, I actually think it's a D tier. It's so bad. Alright guys, advanced nest. Doing this in public is so aids. So many people leech. It's so, it's such a shame. But the enchant that this brings is so good. Advanced nest, the engravings is really nice. And yeah, it is really difficult outside of discords. But yeah, you're literally only doing this for an engraving, which is super rare, not worth. <laughs> yeah, I'll put this low B. I think it's still good. We'll do alien portals next. And I need your help with these. Do you guys think there's a difference in the uh, value of these? Oh yeah, the you can get a Doku from this, you can get a Debo from this. And this is the easiest one, right? I honestly think all the alien dungeons except for the yellow one maybe might be in the S and A tier. What do you guys think? Like, I think this might be in the S tier. <laughs> I just don't know that well. I haven't had much experience. Because this has the Debo, the Tech Turtle's Tail, which is bad. But it has the Doku. 
Hmm, where would you put this? I feel like this is a uh, above Taven. Uh, B. I feel like it's a mech. The whites are bad. Honestly, I feel like it's here. Yeah, okay, I wouldn't waste the time. <laughs> blue. Okay, yeah, I know the blue is nice. You get one to the fallen. And this dungeon's not too hard. But yeah, so many nice whites. The thing is, the blue one is harder. Yeah, I think this is good. All right, yellow. What do you guys think of the yellow one? I need your help on this one again. The T-shot, cringe, and the fallen. Mm, that's all right. It is very AIDS. At least it's quick and you get parts. Maybe low B? I don't know, man. It's worse than green by far. Okay, we'll put it under machine. Okay, now I'm back to knowing the dungeons. This is Oryx Castle, by the way. The Stone Guardians and Janus. Defo above aliens. All right, put it here. <laughs> And if you do Janus fast enough, guys, you can actually do Oryx 1 right after. This is Oryx, uh, what is it called? Um, and yeah, the first Oryx boss is like the easiest way to get T11 weapons, T12 armors. Hey, hang, hang on. I think this is actually, wait, hang on. I think I'm undervaluing these so much. Would you guys say this is a triple, uh, a double S tier? I was just thinking about like how often I run these dungeons and how often I skip them. I never skip T Cave. I actually think this is double S tier for the mark itself. But I'm trying to think where would I put this dungeon. I honestly want to put this here. What do you guys think? Next we have O1. And O1 is very short for really great loot. It has to be somewhere here. It takes a second, usually. I actually think it's probably here. Okay, next up we have Wine Cellar. Wine Cellar is the easiest way to get tier 12 items, easiest uh, tier 12 weapons, easiest way to get tier 13, but I think you'd be silly for skipping a wine cellar. So I do think this is another double S tier. I think it's like here. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a tough one to value. O3. It's pretty crazy, but the problem is that we're assuming that this is in a public realm. This is this is a very high value, even if you join for the minion clear. Every single minion in here gives you at least one fame. So I think this is at least an S, maybe a double S. I'm just trying to place it. So the mini bosses can drop T13s, T14s, and yeah, this is the only place in the game to get T7 items. Granted, there's not many good ones. And yeah, it's great for feed power. Oh man, it's great for legendary forge. Mm, I'd be silly not to put O3 in double S actually. Guys, this is the um, Court of Oryx dungeons. And the problem with the Court of Oryx dungeons is uh, you have to choose them over doing these dungeons, they're all in SS. And I think with Encore, it has two shit whites. The only good thing about it is it has Light Show Scepter, which is an insane like end game bis item. It is quite fast though, but yeah, the pots are really bad. I think low C tier. Now we've got Nidirian Reef. This is quite similar to uh, Puppet Encore. It has slightly better items. The uh, Nidirian Poison's all right, and the Nidirian Scepter's all right. Actually, I think this is a waste of time. All right, Shaitans. Why Shaitans double S tier? Okay, so you have to choose this over these four double S tier item uh, dungeons. Let's check the drops on Shaitans. Skull, shit. wacky, shit. katana, very. Shit. Wait, this this stuff is ass. what? You were trolling. Maybe above D. Uh, maybe above Nigerian Reef. What do you reckon? All right, Secluded Thicket. Secluded Thicket has some interesting items. Oh, and it has the Biss spell actually. The only thing is that this dungeon is AIDS, but it does drop a life pot. I feel like it's here. I think if you're an end end game player without runes, like if you're playing in a public run, you're more, I think you're more likely to go to Court of Oryx for this dungeon or this dungeon. HTT has some good items, but they're all craftable. I think the items are more desirable than Encore, more desirable than Puppet Feudal. How is that? Are we done? <laughs> that was... How long? When did we start this, man? It's been five hours. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. Wow, thank you. Big shout out to my patrons and tier free subs. You can see him on the screen now. That was a lot of fun, guys.